Sevens, it's another natural sciences lesson today. I'm Helen and I hope you're going to have some fun with me today in our lesson that focuses on classification. Now you may remember that in our last lesson we looked at different elements and we said that elements were pure substances and these pure substances could be grouped together according to their behaviors or their characteristics. And so we're going to today look at this idea of classification. Why do we need to classify things? Well, for a moment, I want you to imagine going into a shop to do your shopping and there's no order in the shop. They're just shelves with random things on the shelves. And so you've got your shopping list and you need to get some bread. But the bread, for some reason today, isn't put on the shelf with the other baked goods. The bread is found today with garden plants. That's very strange. And why is the milk not in the fridges with the other cold products? Why is the milk suddenly found with, let's say, soap? That doesn't make sense. So shop owners make our lives as shoppers a lot easier because they sort the things on their shelves and they organize things on the shelves. And what do sorting and organizing do? Well, we sort things based on their features or characteristics that they share. So we will put bread together with bread rolls and other baked goods. We will put milk together with yogurt and other dairy products like butter that need to be keep, kept cool. This idea of sorting or classifying helps us to organize things. It makes it easier to find things. So even if you go into a shop that you've never been into before and you have to buy a bottle of milk, you know that you don't have to start at the one side of the shop and go up and down the aisles. You'll simply look for where the fridges are with the other dairy products and you will find the milk. So it makes it easier to find things, to understand them, or to study them. So let's take this everyday idea of classification and look at scientists and elements, because that is what our focus is at the moment. Scientists classify and sort elements so that they can understand more about how these pure substances behave and how they combine into compounds. So scientists, once they started discovering that there are many pure substances, which they called elements, they started seeing that some of the elements behave similarly to each other. And so they started organizing or classifying the elements. Now in our next lesson we're going to look at what they came up with in terms of a classification system. But today we're going to play around a little bit with the idea of classification and hopefully we'll have a little bit of scientific fun. So here's where the fun starts. A delivery of different kinds of mixed sweets has just been received by the sweet shop. You are employed at the sweet shop to sort the sweets into different groups and to classify them. So you get this whole pile of mixed sweets. You have to sort them into different kinds of sweets and you have to classify them. So if somebody comes into the sweet shop and says, I want to buy some sweets, but my sweets mustn't have any chocolate in them, you can say to the person, well, you need to go to those sweets because those sweets do have chocolate in them. Do you see? It's important that we're able to sort the items in our shop according to their characteristic. And I want you to keep thinking at the back of your mind, this is what scientists do when they sort out different elements. 
So we classify things all around us all the time and it makes us able to see patterns. It helps to keep things organized. We understand things. We can find things once they're classified. And the first step involved in classification is sorting the items into groups where all the members of the groups have similar or shared characteristics. So thinking about science, when scientists began classifying elements, they placed them into groups that shared key similarities. Now let's have a look at our example of the sweets. We have sorted, that's our first step, sorted the sweets into groups where all the sweets in the group have similar shared characteristics. So what do we have here? We've got some jelly beans. We've here got some jelly tots. We've got some lollipops or suckers, stick sweets. We've got some hard boiled sweets. And we've got some soft jupe sweets. And if you have a look at them carefully, they're in the shape of teddies. So we've got some jelly teddies. So what we've done, first of all, is to sort all the similar sweets into different groups. How are we now going to classify these sweets in our shop? Well, we can pick different characteristics. And in these tables here, I've chosen some characteristics that we could use. So let's start. We could say that we're going to classify all the sweets in our shop according to whether they are hard sweets or whether they're soft sweets. Let's begin down at the bottom here. We've got our boiled sweets. If you touch them, feel them, put them in your mouth, are they hard or are they soft? And I think we can say that our boiled sweets are very hard. They can actually hurt your teeth if you try and chew them. What about our jelly teddies? Are they hard or are they soft? Well, of course, they're made out of jelly. So the jelly teddies are nice soft sweets. What about our stick sweets or our lollipops? What are they? Are they hard or are they soft? You have to suck them for a long time. Lollipops are hard sweets. What about our jelly tots? Well, the jelly tots are going to be classified as soft sweets. So what we're doing here is we're separating all of the sweet groups into different categories depending on whether they have the characteristic of being hard or soft but sometimes we end up with problems. What do we do with the jelly beans? Because the jelly beans start with a hard outside and then inside they're soft. They're certainly not as hard as lollipops or boiled sweets, but they're not quite as soft as jelly tots or jelly teddies, are they? So we have some problems. Let's try then and look at a different characteristic for classification. Let's look at the characteristic or property of whether they're covered in sugar or don't have a sugar covering. Are you getting the idea? Can you start doing this classification? Into which group would we put our jelly beans? Are they covered with sugar or not covered with sugar. So now we can classify our jelly beans confidently as they don't have a sugar covering. What about the jelly tots? Well, I'm sure you can even see on the picture that the jelly tots are covered in sugar. What about the jelly teddies? You can once again look and see they've got sugar covering them. So we can put our jelly teddies in this column. What about our stick sweets and our boiled sweets? The lollipops are not covered in a sugary substance and our hard boiled sweets are also not covered in sugar. 
So now we have sorted the sweets according to a different characteristic. Let's try sorting them according to yet another characteristic. We could say sweets with a stick or sweets with no stick. And here I think it's very easy to see that our lollipops are the sweets that have sticks with them and all the rest belong in the sweets with no stick category. So we can take the same group of things, of objects, in this case sweets, and we can classify them in different ways according to what characteristic we're choosing. So what would scientists do? Well, scientists may take an element and they may say, how does this element react with water? And all the chemicals, all the elements that explode in water, they are going to put in one group. And those that are not explosive in water, they'll put into another group. And so we can see that exactly the same principle that is used to classify our sweets in the sweet shop, we could use that same principle to classify chemical elements. And once you have developed a nice classification system, it becomes easier to classify new things you discover. Remember, scientists didn't discover all the elements at the same time. The discovery of elements took hundreds of years and we're still discovering new ones. So this means that when we find a new element, we can use the properties and the characteristics that we used previously to try and find out more about our new element and to find out how it's going to behave and what properties it has. So let's get back to our sweet shop. Here are two lots of new sweets that we've got. We've got some Smarties and we've got some licorice all sorts. So let's classify, are the Smarties hard sweets or are they soft sweets? We find that our Smarties, like the jelly beans, tend to have a harder coating but they're soft inside, so they're another problem sweet. But our all sorts will be nice soft sweets. Covered in sugar or no sugar covering? Both kinds have no sugar covering. Both of these sweets don't have a stick. Can we think of some new characteristics that come with these sweets that we didn't have in our other sweets that we looked at. Well, first of all, were any of these sweets that we looked at first striped? The sweets themselves were different colors, but did any of them have two different colors in one sweet? But here in our all sorts, we could say that the all sorts have stripes, some of them, or no stripes. That could be another characteristic. Our Smarties, of course, have chocolate inside them. So another characteristic could be chocolate or no chocolate. And we could then classify our sweets according to these brand new characteristics. You try and look at these two sweets and see if you can work out the new characteristics and where you would put them into our classification system. You've learned a lot about how and why we classify things today. And we're going to use this principle of classification in our next lesson to look, to leave sweets alone and to look at how scientists have classified all the different elements that are around us in the world. But for today, this is it. And this is Helen saying goodbye.